A large portion of compelling characters in Hunter x Hunter are specialists, and there's no doubting that these specialists have some of the coolest and most interesting nin abilities in the entire series. But if you've watched or read Hunter x Hunter, you know that these specialist nin abilities can get extremely confusing. So in this video, I'm going to be completely explaining every specialist nin ability in Hunter x Hunter. Let's get started. Before we can talk about these specialist nin abilities, we first need to understand the specialist nin type as a whole. In a very basic sense, specialists are the wild card of the nin world. Specialist Nin abilities are completely different than those of other Nin affinities. And this allows Specialist Nin abilities to be pretty odd, such as telling the future or copying someone else's ability. And according to Hisoka's Nin personality test, Specialists are extremely independent and charismatic. They won't say anything important about themselves and will refrain from making close friends. However, because of their natural charisma, they are always surrounded by many other people. During the Water Deviation test, a Specialist Nin student will cause the water to have an effect that doesn't fit in with any other Nin type. And this could be literally anything. And that's pretty much a brief interview of the Specialist Nin type as a whole. Now on to explaining every Specialist Nin ability. There are about 10 notable Specialists in the entire series, and I'm going to be going over every one of their abilities, from least to most complicated in a very loose order. And wasting no time, the first Specialist abilities I want to explain are those of Meliaron, the Chameleon Chimera Ant. Meliaron has two separate abilities, the first of which being called Perfect Plan. Using this ability, he can become completely invisible while holding his breath. He becomes completely undetectable by sight, hearing, sound, and touch, but this all goes away whenever he exhales. But that's pretty much that entire ability. His next Nin ability is called God's Accomplice, and this ability just basically extends his perfect plan to anybody he's touching while he's holding his breath. And that's it for Melioron. The next specialist ability that I'm going to be explaining actually belong to another Chimera Ant, that ability being none other than Leol's Rental Pod. This Nin ability allows Leol to temporarily borrow other Nin abilities, and he must fulfill two conditions before he can steal one of these abilities. He must know the name of the ability he's borrowing or have seen it being used, and he also has to do the owner of the ability a favor, and confirm the acceptance of the debt with a question like, you owe me one, alright? He can use each borrowed Nin ability one time for each favor that he does for the Nin ability's owner. And each one of these borrowed abilities are displayed on his IOU dispenser, a little small iPod device that he has. If an owner of a Nin ability dies, their information is automatically erased from the IOU device. And when Leol wants to borrow a Nin ability from his IOU device, it prints out a small little receipt that grants him the use of the borrowed Nin ability for one hour. Leol's Nin ability is just basically a step down of Crollo's Bandit Secret. The next specialist ability I want to talk about is Neon Nostrad's Lovely Ghost Rider ability. And although this Nin ability is pretty simple, it's it's overpowered. Neon can essentially predict the future through little poems that she writes unconsciously. A Nin beast called the Lovely Ghost Rider manipulates Neon's arm to automatically write her poems. The target of this Nin ability must handwrite his name, full date of birth, and blood type on a piece of paper on which she will write the poem. And a picture of the target's face is necessary if they aren't there in person. Neon's fortunes take the form of a poem with four or five quatrains of four lines each. Each verse represents a week of the respective month, and events in the poems are typically referenced as metaphors. The fortunes always contain advice, and the misfortunes can be avoided if the warnings are adhered to. Also, Neon cannot predict her own future, so... But this is one of the more interesting Nin abilities in the series, and I really like it, so... The next specialist ability I want to talk about is Hina's Exorcism. This ability basically allows Hina to remove Nin-imposed curses. The aura of the curses that she lifts are stored in her stomach, causing it to inflate, which gives her a kind of pregnant look. The stronger the Nin curse that she removes, the larger her stomach grows. Her stomach deflates whenever the curses have been fully lifted or the cursed person has died. The next specialist abilities I want to talk about are those of Pakunoda. Pakunoda has two specialist abilities, and the first of which is called Psychometry. This ability allowed Pakunoda to read the memories of any person that she was in physical contact with by asking them specific questions. This ability can also be used to see an object's past when touching it. Pakunoda's next, and in my opinion more notable, Nin ability is called Memory Bomb. This ability allowed Pakunoda to implant memories into other people's heads. She did this by using a revolver and conjured bullets called Memory Bombs. These Memory Bombs inflicted no damage onto the opponent, but if she shot someone with their own memories that she's already read, they completely forget the memory. That's pretty much all of the simpler Specialist Nin abilities, so now we're moving on to the more advanced and technical Specialist Nin abilities. And the first of these advanced Specialist Nin abilities I want to talk about are the abilities of Pito. Neferpito has two specialist Nin abilities, and the first of which is Dr. Blythe. Dr. Blythe is a giant dog conjured by Neferpito, used only to surgically treat injuries. And Dr. Blythe can treat some pretty insane injuries. A mortal wound in the stomach can be treated in less than one hour. A severed arm can be fully attached and fully healed in two to three hours. Neferpito can also use Dr. Blythe to reconstruct dead corpses that can later be manipulated like she did with Kite. Dr. Blythe cannot move from where it was summoned, and Neferpito can only move within about 20 meters of it. Having Dr. Blythe summoned also causes Neferpito to be extremely more vulnerable to damage. I'm not even going to try to pronounce Neferpito's next inability, but here's how it's spelled. 
But this ability is one of the strongest usages of Postmortem Nin that we've seen in the entire series. This ability essentially summons a giant puppeteer that controls Neferpito's body after death. It takes less than a tenth of a second to start being used offensively after being manifested. This Nin ability was manifested out of Neferpito's pure loyalty to the king, and this basically allows her to become stronger after death. This doesn't matter though, Go and still mercs Pito. The next specialist abilities that we're talking about belong to no other than King Mariam. Mariam has two separate specialist nin abilities called Ore Synthesis and Metamorphosis, but they essentially work in the same exact way, so I'm going to explain them as one. But this nin ability is crazy strong, and probably the strongest on this list. Mariam's nin ability basically gives him strength through consumption. His ore grows every time that he digests a user of nin, and it adds to his own. And when he eats strong enough nin users, he actually absorbs some of their nin abilities, like he did with Yuppie and Shy Poof. It can be assumed that Mariam has to ingest the majority of someone's body to be able to use this ability, but this is still an insanely powerful ability. The second part of Mariam's nin ability basically allows him to metamorphosize nin abilities that he gains from eating people, which allows him to use the nin abilities that he gains even better than the people who originally owned them. For example, Mariam gained Shy Poof's wings after he ate Shy Poof. And when using these wings, he was able to fly a distance that would take Shaipu 15 minutes and 5 minutes. This new ability is extremely broken and powerful, so it's probably for the better that it's not still out there. The next specialist nin ability I'm going to be talking about is one that I'm sure you guys were waiting for. That nin ability being none other than Karapika's Emperor Time ability. I'm sure many of you know, when Karapika's eyes shift to Scarlet, he changes from a conjurer to a specialist, and his ability allows him to use every type of nin to 100% efficiency, making him an incredibly strong nin user. But the price that he pays for this extremely powerful nin ability is quite significant, considering the fact that every second that he spends in Emperor Time takes an entire hour off of his life, which means that for just one minute spent using Emperor Time, Kuropika takes off about two days of his lifespan. I'm not going to go into detail about every chain that Kuropika has because that could, be a, that could be its own video. The second to last specialist nin abilities I'm going to be explaining belong to Krollo. And he has probably my favorite nin abilities in the entire show. Krollo's iconic skill hunter nin ability allows him to steal the nin abilities of others by using his book Bandit Secret. And after stealing a nin ability from someone, the person that he steals it from has no access to this nin ability. And Krollo can only steal a nin ability under very strict conditions, of which there are four. The first of which being that Krollo must witness the nin ability in action with his own eyes. The second being that he has to ask questions about the nin ability and it has to be answered by the victim. The third being that his victim's palm must touch the handprint on the cover of Bandit Secret. And the fourth being that all of this must be completed in one hour. To use the stolen ability, Krollo first conjures Bandit's secret and turns to the page of the desired ability. The book must then remain open in his right hand so he can only use one ability at a time. And a nin ability disappears from the book whenever its former owner dies. But if post-mortem nin is involved, Krollo can still use that nin ability after the owner's death. Krollo's second specialist nin ability, Double Face, allows him to break some of the rules of his first nin ability. Double Face is essentially a bookmark that Krollo can place in Bandit Secret that allows him to maintain access to any ability on the page that it's placed on. And this works even if the book is closed and he's not touching it, which creates a pretty big loophole in his first ability. This allows Krollo to use hand-to-hand -hand combat and conjuration with his stolen abilities. And it even allows Krollo to use two stolen abilities at the exact same time. This bookmark belonged to the book originally, it was not a nin ability that he stole. And this nin ability is insanely powerful and makes his first nin ability even more powerful. And these two nin abilities in conjunction made for a really good fight between Krollo and Hisoka. But that's pretty much everything on Krollo's specialist abilities. This final specialist nin ability I'm going to be talking about has only been shown in the manga. It belongs to 4th Prince Sarajnik and it's absurdly powerful and complicated. His nin ability is called Parallel Future and it basically allows him to see into the future while also looking at real time. It's incredibly confusing and I don't know if my explanation can do it justice, but I'm going to do my best. When Sarajnik closes his eyes and activates Zetsu, he receives a vision or what he refers to as a precognition that shows him the following 10 seconds of time. This happens instantaneously and there is no time between the start and the end of this precognition. After 10 seconds of the precognition, he does not open his eyes or rescind his Zetsu, but time outside of this precognition returns to normal. But he continues to see 10 seconds into the future. And essentially the time in the vision and the time in the real world start running in tandem. Stratton can both see and hear what's happening in his vision, while at the same time perceiving what occurs outside of it, and he recovers his ability to move. After Sarajnik rescinds the precognition part of the ability, a subsequent stage of the ability begins and everybody who is shown the vision except Sarajnik himself will perceive the next 10 seconds unfold exactly as he predicted, even if Sarajnik uses his foreknowledge to change his course of action. For example, whenever this guard was going to shoot Sarajnik, she saw herself shooting Sarajnik. This didn't actually happen because Sarajnik moved in his precognition, but after the 10 seconds were up, Sarajnik appeared fine and okay, not being shot because he moved out of the way. In real world time, so did a matchup with his precognition. So, yeah. That's about as good as I can explain Sarajnik's ability because it's so incredibly complicated. So I hope you guys could understand at least some part of that. But that 
pretty much brings an end to explaining every specialist nin ability. And thank you for watching. I hope this video was an enjoyable watch, and I hope it provided you with some knowledge on specialist nin abilities. A like and subscribe would be much appreciated, but even watching this video is, is more than enough for me. And please let me know in the comments what you want to see in the future, what you thought of this video. But that's pretty much everything. I've been Hank. Bye.